on the short, short, short straw, having a the last talk of the day, and you're probably a bit tired and itching for a drink. So I'm not going to speed it up, but we've got a bit to get through. All right. Well, here we all are, and um, I'm really happy to be here. This is the third citizen science conference I've been to. The first one was in my hometown of Canberra. The second one was in Adelaide. As many of you know, the one in 2020 was um, bazumped by COVID. Um, there was an online one, and here we are now. So thanks for being here. Okay. Look, we're all individuals here, and uh, I, um, I'm an individual, and not a very educated one, so it's very scary being up here. But I feel I feel worthy of being here. I'm trying to represent the um, the small person in citizen science. There's a lot of leaders, academics, facilitators here, um, who are a bit top heavy, you could say. And so I'm trying to just be here as someone who likes citizen science. I I used to have an inferior inferiority complex, and it's been cured somewhat by citizen science. The practice I was putting out there. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm here. All right, what's the first? How did I get into citizen science? And which button is that one? Okay, these things first. Um, on photography of birds back in probably when citizen science, the, t uh, the term was coined in 1995, I think it was Rick Bonnie of Cornell and a few other people came up with the term citizen science. So astronomy and bird watching were pivotal in that. And in 1995, I, I um, had just got out of the Air Force, a 10-year career in the Air Force, and um, it was the only time in my life I had a bit of money, so I bought a camera and started getting into birds and bird photography. So I remember as a boy, though, see, seeds are planted earlier. As a boy growing up in Canberra, probably 8 to 10 years old, I remember a bird, see if anyone can pick this, it goes... Pallet cuckoo, anyway. I just remembered that sound. Um, and when I started becoming a bird nerd, a card carrying bird nerd, I remembered the pallet cuckoo. Very, not a remarkable looking bird, but I always remember that call. So little seeds have been planted all throughout our life, and, and they come out later. All right, so the birds. Now, just before I came back to Australia in 1991, um, I was living in Penang, and I remember being blown away by this beautiful bright yellow bird, it was called a black naped oriole, and it just had this effect inside me, which triggered off this nature thing, where I just had to be out in nature, I wanted, wanted to be out in nature. So birds formed a, quite a large part of that awakening within me as an individual. I think that shot of the peregrine falcon there off the cliff at Aladala was one of my first shots with a camera, it just flew by and I just panned it, you know. And when you get home and you see shots like that, you go, wow, you know? It just captures that moment and you can take it home. All right, so birds. Now, I was trying to take a photo of a bird in 2008 uh, just in the mountains near Canberra called a um, spotted quail thrush. That's pretty nerdy, isn't it? And, um, but I also had a macro lens that, uh, that I bought because macro photography was about small, interesting stuff. And... Um, some of you will know the story, some of you might have seen the film, which is on YouTube, but I accidentally discovered a new species of peacock spider. And to cut this, because I hate to dwell and become stereotyped about just peacock spiders, but in the last 10 years or so, there are four, six of the ones I've been involved in discovering. After, I haven't even got a photo, oh there it is, on the top right there, that's the one they ended up naming after me, after a three year search. Because obviously when you take a photo of a spider, you can't describe it based on a photograph. You need to go back and um, find it. And that was the basis of the movie. There's a few stories in there, as you can imagine. The bottom right one, Maratus Hesperus was, and remember that for the last slide today, the bottom right hand one with a yellow dot on a blue background. Hesperus is Greek for Venus. I was luckily involved in naming that. Um, that I found when I was working at a vineyard, at Mount Virginia Vineyard in Canberra, just had a little container in my pocket, there's a little blue spider, picked it up, and the next thing you know, there's another new species. So there's all sorts of um, stories behind that. I'm not going to um, labour you with that this afternoon. The bottom left-hand one, my 
Atlantis elephant. I don't know if you can see the elephant in the Opista sign-up. There's this big plaque there. And at the time, my girlfriend, I, I brought it home from near Tamworth, and she said, oh, it looks like an elephant. And so it ended up being called Atlantis elephant. So some, there's been talk today, I've heard about ta taxonomy and taxonomists, not that they're that easy to work with, but, um, you know, if you treat them like members, like hopefully you get treated, then you can, you can you build good relationships, you can have good outcomes. Okay. So the first nerdy bit of citizen science I got into was, that, oh sorry, the second species I discovered, you see the map up here, the ecologist in ACC government said, oh, we want, we want you to show us where you found it. So I took them out there, you can see the red line at the top, the arrow pointing down. Has this got a stamp on it? Is it that one? No. no, it doesn't matter. Oh, there it is. See that red line there? So that's the main drag, and I walked about 800 metres to where the spider was there. Now, this is a fire ecology map and um, has all the dates where burns have been done on Black Mountain, which is landlocked by the city of Canberra. It's got an amazing amount of biodiversity in it, but all the coloured areas, other than the pale green, are uh, where burns have occurred. Now, as you can see there with the arrow points, where I found that spider had never been burnt. So I thought, oh, that's interesting, isn't it? And so I went back to the ecologist, and now this is a interesting part. So as a citizen scientist, I was taken seriously fast. A year later, I was at a volunteering at a visitor centre and was going through a thing called the Bushfire Operational Plan, and which lists strategies to reduce you know, bushfires in the area, slashing, um, uh, cutting trails, uh, getting goats to eat the grass and stuff like that. And in the column on the right hand side, it's, it talked about the ecological species they were trying to save in that area. And I read this column and said, I do not burn here because of peacock spider population. I thought, wow, I had something to do with that. But no one had ever bothered to send an email around and say, hey, Stuart, by the way, that spider population we found there on Black Mountain, we're now changing our uh, operations as a result of that. So a big part, if you're facilitators to grassroots people, a little goes a long way. You know, you give that feedback, it means a lot to you. Not after this stuff. You just ask for recognition for your efforts. That's really important. Okay. So, as a result of that, I get a call from, I get an email from the, the chief scientist at the time, Professor Ian Chubb. Come down to the Department of Industry and explain all this stuff about peacock spiders, which was getting a bit of media. So I ended up doing a talk um, at the chief scientist's office there. I was very scared. I had a high wind shirt on straight out of the vineyard, smelly, whatnot. And but the secretary of the department came up afterwards and said, the Indian fellow, he goes, that was one of the best speeches I've ever heard. And take it as you will, but the thing is, I probably had a different approach to the average person who was going up and talking at the Department of Industry boardroom. And so being a grassroots citizen scientist, I mean, I think you have to remain unique and genuine and, and just tell the story as it is, not try and be a scientist or try and be something that you're not. Okay, now this, at the, at the Adelaide um, conference in 2018, the thing I took away, one of the things I took away from that was uh, about this chap. Some might be familiar, if you were there, some not. Uh, so Fer Baron Ferdinand, Ferdinand von Mueller was a, a chemist, became a botanist, lived in Adelaide. Now, those dots on the map are areas he used citizen scientists to collect botanical specimens all around Australia from his place. And there wasn't the internet then, there was no highways or high speed rail or anything like that, planes. And um, he used primarily women and children from farms. What a great way to do it. What a smart way to do it. You know, the guys are out working in the fields and he, I don't know the mechanics of how it happened, but that's the outcome. And they, there was hundreds of volunteers he had and they discovered thousands of species of plants in, just from that facilitation there. So good on you, Ferdinand. Or oh, what have we got next? Okay, there's three key words from, um, for this, or themes for this uh, conference. I'm not gonna say anything about them. I just, just ponder them, you know? I had a talk with uh, Claire Hawke, are you there, Claire, somewhere? Yeah, Claire. 
the other day on the first day when there's only a few of us walking around and I think we spoke for about half an hour on inspire. Well, what is it? What does it feel like to be inspired? Why does it happen? What do you do with it? So I'm not going to talk about it, just go away. And words are cheap, you know, but ponder why those words were chosen for what we're doing here in the next few days. I personally prefer the C word. Communicate. All right? Had your way there, didn't I? But anyway, so, well, that's just a few pictures of stuff that I've done over the last little while, Becca, so all this excitement. I actually went back to school and did a, a certificate for in environmental monitoring, and that opened up a whole heap of doors, even to paid work. Um, and it's been quite successful. Um, I was invited to go to Armadale for a Fog Dreaming thing with the kids. I actually work at Questacon with kids and the general public. I've been there for eight years now. Art, they say art and science don't mix, but you know, they got me to take some peacock spiders along to an artistic workshop. Um, there's a group in Perth that I got to lead. Ticks. I'm paranoid about ticks, so I usually end up in hospital. But that's, you know, a byproduct of being in citizen science. This is a lovely story. One of those peacock spiders on the opening slide, I let a I was in a bio bits down at Bermagui on the south New South Wales coast and had a group of ten people and a few people had to leave early. They probably weren't that excited. I didn't inspire them enough, but these three women stayed behind. And the lady in the centre there, oh, I forgot her name, but anyway, she came up to me and said, oh Stuart, I gave them all the little tube like this, oh Stuart, what's this? And I went, here's the thing, wow, that's a new species. So just, just on a little, friendly little bio blitz, uh, we found a new species of, and they were thrilled. You can see it on their faces, you know, just to be involved in that. And in the little journey so far, it's been a bit of media and stuff. It's all very scary, as is, is, is now. But um, yeah, you just never know, wouldn't you? Just take a photo of one spider, and next thing you know, you're doing all this sort of stuff. It's um, pretty cool. On. Now, it's not all good news. Uh, with the spiders, I had some young scientists have a go at me uh, online. We, we caught trolling, and um, I said that I discovered that elephant species, and they they got me on semantics and say, you didn't discover it, you rediscovered it. And they said that I'd made a grave error and, and really, it really affected me. I might be a big goofy guy, but I'm pretty sensitive. And so I pulled away from peacock spiders, I stopped looking for them. But luckily this gentleman, he was over, no, oh, sorry. Oh, anyway, uh, there was a gentleman on the last slide. How do you go back? Can you put it back? Back one, sorry. Thanks. This gentleman here, David Knowles, a zoologist, a guy that just can't market himself at all. But what he doesn't know isn't worth knowing. And he kept trying to get me onto jewel beetles. He said, oh, I want you. We're, out with, we're, in, we're there in the Grampians in 2017. What was that comedian name? He died of a heart attack. John Clark. And we went to the place where he had a heart attack. That's exactly where John had a heart attack. And if we found... Um, a new species we were going to name it after him. But we ended up finding the one that I they named after me. So, yeah, but anyway, David, um, we, had a, we had a good time. Yeah, but you know, he's one of those legendary people that just, yeah, just can't market himself. But I wish I could take 30 years off his life and get him back into this movement. He'd, he'd be amazing. So, yeah, I got him to jewel beetles instead. He planted a seed and now they came, and that's. What I spent the last five years doing, I think, with Canberra Nature Map, Michael down there, who's a key founder of Canberra Nature Map, knows that I think when I started in 2015, there was only 13 species of jewel beetle in the ACT, and now we've got to well over 100. Just by going out, and it's not just me, it's other people think, oh, they're really good, and, and out they go. So that inspiring part. The wonderful creatures, there's nearly 1,300 species in Australia. And um, from three millimetres long to 70 millimetres long. I've written a scientific paper done on, well, I can't remember the genus, but in Western Australia where the males have sex with beer bottles. Have 
you know how about that? Because the beer bottle has a little pump tape, it has a pump tape, a lighter, the, 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 the shells have little pump, pump, pump tapes and little dimples, which looks like a female uh, jewel bell, and so you, you see the same pump in the top. Trying to make them be stubby, see? Don't doubt my words, look it up. Anyway, so there you go. And there's some more jewel bell. That one I found in Narrow, that I've been seen for 60 years, that job there. Beautiful. And another negative story. A lot of uh, fetal people are collectors. They collect them, they're not necessarily recyclers. And someone actually stole one from my house. So, you know, you've got to navigate the waters. And it's not all roses, and if you pretend it is, you can see some signs. You know, so, if you've got an opportunity this next few days to be honest and, and share some of your negative stories and maybe someone will be able to help you or at least you've got it off your chest. Okay, and just finally a few, uh, some little bit of media there. I think I, I was at a lecture earlier today and that same photograph was up. There was, um, what's his name? Um, who, who put that photograph up earlier today? Someone here? No, anyway, oh, that's me. So this little bloke here, Luke, he was only 14 then, he, I threw Cameron H in that. He's, um, I was invited out to his property to show him around. And um, a week later he was going around Lake Billy Griffin with his mum and he knew then about jewel beetles and he saw this thing on the ground, he sent me a photo and I went, I hadn't seen that before and I looked it up and that beetle hadn't been seen since 1959. Now Michael is involved in this story because Michael planted that garden 20 or so years ago and it was on Bessaria, which is a quite a favourite bush of jewel beetles and um, at the hospice there near the lake and um, yeah, so this beetle had been living in the area all that time and here was someone with a little bit of awareness, went out and, and there, there it was, so a nice little story. Um, the last story I'll tell tonight is this one a recent one? Only last year, I was lucky to write a whole page in the Canberra Times on citizen science. I spy with my citizen science eye. Right. And you'll see that sometimes the actual site is marked with the word citizen science. And the two women in the photo, both 40 years of age, one is a GP, the other one is a, works in human resources and public service. They're into photography and they've taken photos of the botanic gardens in Canberra. And, and uh, they took a photo of this peacock spider and we, um, myself and a guy called Joseph Huber in Melbourne who specialised in them, looked at it and yeah, it's Maratus Wattigansi. Now the Wattigans Ranges are just north of, or west of Newcastle, it's sort of subtropical rainforest and there's no subtropical rainforest around Canberra. I can assure you, other than in the Botanic Gardens. Now that rainforest gully there was uh, created in 1970. So they've taken all these tree ferns from the Wattigans range and planted them in the rainforest gully. 50 years later, 52 years later, scientists are walking around there on their lunch break. No one had noticed this population of 100 or more of that particular peacock spider. And so it took a, a, an ignorant eye or it, it took a, someone who was just getting into that sort of thing to find that particular spider. And when they found out, they were, they were over the moon, you know. And uh, so sometimes the untrained can, can really bear amazing results. Okay. And there's good old David up there again. Okay, so just to finish off... Um, Remember I said to um, keep your eye on that Maratha Sexpress, the spider with the yellow dot? One thing I like to finish on is a nice note, you know, uh, sometimes the thing I like about citizen science and getting in the bush is that Mother Nature always serves up something, a surprise. And that particular spider, you don't see it all the time, but I found it last year. And that little circle was actually a heart. 
yeah, a little variation in the pattern, at least in tapping the, the colours on Peacock Slides a little sort of light reflective scales or sea fade. But yeah, when I saw that, I'm like, what? You know, what? You know. Anyway, so I think this whole week we're here is, is all about the heart, sharing with each other, and um, and so yeah, thanks for getting me up here and. And uh, hopefully it's a really good conference. Let's go and have a drink and, and, and socialise and, and be human. Mm.